G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. My hope for this afternoon, since the sun is still relatively high in the sky, is to get the important stuff from this base and try and combine it into one vehicle. The important stuff that we've got around here is obviously the miner, then we've got the assembler and refinery, and around this side we've got our battery which is relatively well charged, and then of course the survival pod with the all important survival kit. It's O2 tank and the hydrogen engine underneath. Now the thoughts that I had last time were to build a new vehicle, something that I would be able to lift the important parts of this onto and then drive away. But after thinking about this for a while and reading a few of the suggestions in the comments, I think maybe the better idea would be to turn this whole thing into some sort of trailer. So the idea would be that I take the miner and I attach it to this battery, which is highly charged because the miner's battery has very little charge on it and is also charging very, very slowly, but we'll get to that shortly. So attach the miner to this battery and then attach this battery and the miner to the survival pod and underneath the cargo container at the back here, somewhere below the level of the engine, I'll put two more wheels on, or at least two more wheels. And with that all hooked up together, I'll have a four wheeled vehicle that maybe should be able to bring all of this stuff over to the new base location. And then it'll only be trying to figure out how I can get the assembler and basic refinery over there so that I don't have to build a whole new pair of those. And that bit I haven't quite worked out yet. That may require, well, it's almost certainly going to require a custom vehicle. Because I would need to lift them up, move them over, and then drop them down on whatever vehicle. So that's always going to be a bit more of a challenge. So now the thing I was saying about the batteries, fully recharged in one day. So 24 hours of real time for this battery to recharge. A few people have mentioned, having played the scenario themselves, that they found that solar panels at their peak output are about one and a half times as efficient as a wind turbine or one and a half times as effective as a wind turbine when it's at optimal level. So the wind turbine's about 108 and the solar panels were about 150 something. That should mean that a wind turbine at anything more than about 80 megawatts of production is going to be more effective over a 24 hour period than an optimally positioned and tracking solar panel. So in theory, I may get advantages out of a tracking solar tower, or it might end up being just about the same as an optimal wind farm. But the nice thing about solar panels is you can actually make them more dense. So I think in that way, it kind of hit the mark that I was intending to, although I did it completely accidentally. So I didn't actually test these things, I just kind of went with it. I was meaning to test it, but I didn't get around to it. So what I'm thinking is, we've now got a very deliberate decision to make. Do we go for density of power, or do we go with maximum power output over a 24 hour period? And I kind of like it. I'm, I'm happy with that outcome, but it also means that I probably won't gain anything from placing a solar panel on here versus building the wind turbines. But when I get to the new base, I'm definitely going to have to think about how and where I'm going to build a tracking solar tower using Izzy's solar alignment script. But that is for the future. For now, we need a way to get this miner with its battery lined up to this battery so that I can connect it. And I think probably the best way to do this will be to build a cheap little platform like I've done up there around here so that I can just drive straight back up to this thing. So let's grab a few interior plate, because interior plate costs one iron ingot and steel plate costs seven. So much better off using things that use interior plate. I do have Digi's advanced welding mod active in this save, but the reason I haven't been using it is that all scrap still scraps the components that you grind down when you use the detach mode of 
the advanced welding mod. So if I tried to drop any of these blocks off, anything that is above the functional line will get turned into scrap. So I won't really use that until I have no alternative. But I still want the advanced welding mod so that I can use its little welding pads and not have to always use merge blocks to join stuff up. Oh, get out there and place that block. Should have used interior walls rather than uh, catwalks. It would have made placement a bit easier. Then what we need on to this battery is a rotor. And I'm going to place the rotor on the battery. Just like the rotor that's on the base attaches to the rotor part on the miner. I don't really want the rotor to be on the miner. Even though in some ways it does make a bit of sense to do it that way. Because of the ability to control the attachment from the vehicle. But... It's just because I don't... I know I'm going to need to grind this... Grind it off at some point anyway. Alrighty. Time to detach. Okay. Then... See if I can do this without falling off the edge of my new little platform. Which has no safety railings. With the troubles I was having lining stuff up last time... There was a really good suggestion that I would like to see if I can figure out how to implement. Um, which was to put either a wheel or a piston or something as a third support at the back here. Now, unfortunately, the hole that would have been best for that, I have put the ore detector in, so I can't really put a piston in there. But what I may do in the future is add a pair of pistons at the back here that can extend down, and then I can kind of skate along them in such a way that we can pull them out of the way so that they don't get in the way for the mining. But, when parking, they'll create a nice level platform. I've got to remove this rotor part and then place a new rotor part on in the middle. Hopefully that is at a height that it'll be able to connect. If I soften my wheels enough. Maybe. <laughs> Doesn't look great. Oh, could work. It's going to be interesting. All right. Uh, turn them all. Oh, if I turn them all off, it actually might put it in the right position to attach. Let's give that a go. So my, I just turned off my overrides and the whole thing wants to lean backwards, which has possibly made this work nicely. Uh... Ooh, that was a clanging. That makes me nervous. All right, am I about to lose all of my most important stuff as I detach the two batteries? No, haha, -ha. it worked. Now I have all of the power. Yeah, you can kind of see where the length of this is a bit of a problem. Cause I can't easily cross over this up. But that is stage one complete. Now I need to work out how I'm going to get this thing in a position where I can reverse up to it and attach. And it looks like I'm not going to be anywhere near making this by the time the sun gets below that mountain. That is a pity. I think the way I'm going to do this is maybe off the back edge of this container. So if I place an armor block here, then I so want to greeble this. I'm going to. Then a light armor slope there, another one there, and then do the same on the other side. I should be able to attach three by three wheels on both sides, and then drill out a relatively smooth path to get this thing out of here. So that'll put some wheels nicely toward the back. Then what I need to do is make sure I've got some sort of way to keep these locked down so that this stays at the current height. And then I can work out what height I have to put the rotor to attach correctly to the front bit, which will be the miner. This will be a very, very long wheelbase. So turning and going over any steep slopes will be interesting. Let's go out a little bit more. See if I can get armor block in here in such a way 
that landing gear can attach. Basically what I was trying to do when I accidentally detached it a while back. Yeah, there we go. So now I can drill quite freely around the other landing gear because it's locked to this grid, to this block instead of locked to the ground. And we want our left 3x3 three three wheel on there. And our right will go on this side and I don't think I've got quite enough room. Add wheel. There we go. So yeah, something like this is what I'm thinking. Well, this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's not something like this. This is actually what I'm planning and what I'm going to use. I'll just have to be very careful about the ground clearance. So we need that plus that plus that plus that in our build planner. And shift middle mouse. We should have plenty enough of resources for all of that. Yeah, that's only a small fraction of our saved up iron. And we have wheels. Now, I've got the wheels at that height, and I want to make sure that the front half wheels are also correct. My rotor should be... One, two... I want to make it to the middle of the battery, which I think makes a bit of sense. That's two blocks above. So... I'm going to... I might actually grind off the front of this just so that we shorten this wheelbase a bit. I think the cost of resources... Well, I'm going to have to grind this off at, any, at some point anyway. I'm going to shorten the survival pod a little bit just so the wheelbase isn't any longer than it absolutely needs to be. So let's just check that measuring again. It was... line at the bottom. Yeah. So that means I need to have the rotor... Just here. Do I want it on? I don't think I want it on that block though. I think I want to put it stuck out in front just to preview. There, 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 there. Just to reduce any potential clanging. This would have been a great situation for small rotors to be able to take materials through them or even just gases or ores because I could have then drilled around on the snow and had stuff delivered directly to the hydrogen engine on this thing. Which, despite sounding like it's on, I am pretty confident it is not. <laughs> oh, this looks weird. <laughs> this looks super weird. Uh, just thinking about whether I put some steel catwalk down here. I will. Just for a very flat and very high friction surface for the miner. Also... If you're wondering why I've taken why I'm taking so long to name the little goofy miner thing, it's because I'm still trying to decide if I want to stick with the uh, bird-related names that I went with in Survival, maybe, or if I want to try and come up with a new theme, or just no theme, because that could that could be a thing. I don't know. When I decide, it will get a name. Uh, let's detach the head, and then let's see if we can get it attached to the other half. And then, figure out how on earth I'm going to drive this monstrosity. This is very weird to control in reverse. My brain is not happy trying to figure it out. Okay, also, this thing is not liking that transition. Oh, this is awkward! This is super awkward. Let's try controlling from this angle. That might make my brain hurt less. How close am I? Yeah. Not horrible. Okay. Drop our strength down. And let's see where it's lining up. Oh yeah, that should work. I should be able to lock on if I go back just a little bit. Please, 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 don't do anything horrible to me. Yes, yes, it worked, it worked. It's all connected. <laughs> and I now have to get rid of all of these things underneath. So obviously I have to get rid of this platform now because those rear wheels are not ever going to make it across it. The platform was just there to make the attachment to that second rotor feasible. 
These rotors look pretty square, so I'm going to rotor lock them and make this a rigid body. So I would prefer not to have the uh, twisting around the middle. It may add a little bit of extra traction, but I think it'll make control a lot more difficult. And finally, I'm going to need to add a programmable block somewhere on here before I try and get this out of here so that I've got control over those rear wheels properly. Do I want to put a programmable lock in the middle here? I guess I kind of do. I'm almost certainly going to run a script on this at some point. Yeah, I'll pop a programmable lock just on top of that. Uh, small cargo container that's between the cockpit and the battery. Oh, the rust looks weird on the screens. It's really weird. Edit. Browse scripts. Wait for my script library to load. Hello? Oh, weird. Weird. Oh, whatever. whatever. And we have subgrid wheels control script working. Perfect. Let's grind that away. And let's turn auto lock off. And auto lock goes already off. Then we strengthen our suspension and hope that we get enough ground clearance out of that to get out of here. I'm going to have to be very, very careful here. And I'm also going to need to increase the suspension strength of these. It's a bit more clearance. Still going to be dicey though, because this is a very long vehicle. <laughs> it's worked! Ah! Uh, yes. Alright, so what we need is group for those wheels. Survival pod wheels. Because of a weird thing that happens with the subgrid wheel control script. Toggle block on off. And I'll also have my. Actually. I'm going to remove the drill from the third spot and put my wheels there. Because when we park. These wheels on the back will still keep using power, and I don't want that. So, to stop that from happening, uh, when I park, I turn those wheels off. The way the subgrid wheel control script works, it continues to try and fight the minor movements that happen when you're parked, but you really just want friction to take care of that. And that minor nuisance is well and truly worth the awesomeness of the script. And now for the big question. Do I try and get there at night when I can't see? And, uh, I don't think I should. What I'm going to try and do is drive out of here. Oh, uh, not just yet. I'm going to turn off steering on those. And on the second hot bar, I will remove that. And I will put steering on the goofy wheels. Okay, I'm stuck. I'm on such a slant that getting out of here is going to be an interesting challenge. Attempt number three, or two, or I've lost count. Oh, 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 come on, turn up the hill, go up the hill, don't roll. Why won't you turn? Oh, the turning on this is terrible. the length of this ridiculous thing. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it works. It actually works though. <laughs> it is all together as a vehicle. Oh man. Uh, I wonder if I can reverse in and hook back up to the base overnight. That'd be kind of handy. I'm really iffy about Reversing, pointing straight down the hill though. Ooh, that would be a boulder of magnesium there. If I could connect back up to the base, that would be kind of cool. The next hour and a half while I'm stuck at night. Oh! No, 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 oh. no. No, 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 no! Oh no. 
Oh, so bad. I lost control because I had too much power. I think all I've broken is that landing gear. <laughs> oh, that's lucky. Uh, right. So instead of charging this for the night, I'm going to be drilling this out of its very awkward predicament. Yay. I accidentally pressed the wrong key. So what was happening when I was driving was if I tried to use the park, like the handbrake to slow down, it was doing next to nothing. So the most effective way for me to stop was to press W. And then because I was reversing, W did not, wait, not W, uh, S. I was pressing S to brake. Because I was pressing S to brake, when I was going forward, I was going backwards, instead of braking, I ended up accelerating and driving myself into a hole. Oh. Hey! Yes! I made it out. I made it out of the pit I put myself in. Yay! Now, can I reverse this into position to potentially revoke to that rotor? Yeah, I'm gonna kinda do it. I think it'll be the best way to take advantage of the night. Make this pathway up to the platform. Charge up for the night. Probably do a little bit of hand drilling just to collect a few resources while the night goes by. Because otherwise I'm just kind of wasting my time. And come morning we can drive off to the new base location. Set ourselves up properly. Please, please, please. No! Uh, why? Is it a pretty good height? I'm not square enough for it to play nice with me. So I'm a bit of, bit askew. Yeah, I've still got plenty of night time. I don't see any chance, any suggestion of daylight on on its way. Yeah, let's try and line this up a little bit better. Okay, please work. No! Ah, something was going funny with the rotor, and I had to add an extra part remove it and then the attach button actually appeared on the rotor controls in the main control screen so I'm hopeful if I can get it in the same position I had it earlier where things looked good that it'll work. Rotor 3. Attach. Oh it did work! I'm hooked up! Aha! I didn't think I was doing anything too dumb with that. I thought I had it pretty much lined up. Okay, so now we need to grab our wheels, set our strengths to zero. So when I detach from that rotor, I don't jump into the sky. <sighs> cool. You may be wondering why I've waited so long to get going, and it's because as the night went on, I realized there were still a lot of things I needed to prepare before moving to a new site. I needed to make sure that when I get to the new site, I can establish a base fairly quickly. I didn't want to have to go through the whole survival kit, palaver, all over again. I wanted to take advantage of the fact that I had this basic refinery to do stuff that would save me the effort of having to use the survival kit. But, equally, I don't have a means to get this basic refinery and assembler to my new base. To do so would require an extra vehicle, and an extra vehicle means Puffing it back and forth between Future Home and here. But that doesn't really work, because I can't run that distance. I just... I would need to have a means to drive both vehicles, then take one vehicle back, then get to come back, and then return to the original site with both vehicles again. Which all gets very, very complicated. And is something that I hope to design into my future vehicles, but for now, I don't really have a towing rig. This thing is way too haphazard to consider putting something as heavy as the refinery and the assembler on. So what I've done instead is produce the components needed for a full assembler and four wind turbines and a few other bits and pieces. And now that I say all that, I realize that perhaps I should also include the parts for a basic refinery so that I can get one established at the new base and then with it and the proper assembler build the vehicle to bring this extra basic refinery over so that I have two refineries able to operate. And let me just pop those out. We'll see how much we actually need 
in order to get a basic refinery up. So we've got a refinery, basic refinery. Let's get rid of those from my build planner. Add that. Production. Basic assembler. A thousand iron? Oh, That's a lot. I don't need those though, because they're the extras. Still 821. Oh, I don't want to run out of daylight. Um, if I go to my batteries, how much am I gaining from just sitting here? Oh, they are recharging at a, an acceptable rate, I guess. I think I should do it. I think I should do it. Make sure that I can just build everything as soon as I get there. So, iron. Nickel, silicon, we'll just grab those because that's all we need. Now, the basic assembler. I need to get another 774 iron and I've got everything else that I need. Okay, so what I did overnight as well, because I was wanting to leave everything hooked up because I don't trust myself to be able to reconnect to this rotor to take the miner off, was something that I'd always been a bit meh about, which is building chutes or drilling chutes to allow stone to roll down to where you actually want it to be. So if you had a collector at the bottom, that sort of thing. And in this instance, it's actually worked out a lot better than it had when I'd previously tried this. The stones are rolling right down next to the refinery, so I can drill like this. Allow them to roll down. Once I've got my inventory full, I wander down. Drop everything in the refinery. Quickly collect more from here. Inventory. And even doing it manually like this, it's sped up the process a fair bit. So I have to admit, I was wrong about that approach. It does actually work quite well. Which is kind of cool. Or at least it works quite well in the right settings and this is absolutely the right setting for it. I cannot get that little chunk. What pity. I think I was probably in too flat an area to try it the first time. Although, I think the time that I tried it for the longest was actually on Titan. Uh, where I had stuff rolling down onto the ice lake. So it should have worked. Maybe it's more noticeable in Survival Impossible because I've got... Because I need to drill so much more. That I can't as quickly get on to building a proper miner and replacing this technique that here I am four episodes in or into the fourth episode and I still need to be hand drilling that kind of tells me that I am progressing much more slowly than previously which is intentional I had wanted this to be a bit of a more thoughtful and slow moving series because I didn't want to get to resource utopia instantly because it's so easy to do that with the vanilla game just thought I'd mention that because I had been fairly anti this approach in the past. But it can actually work in the right circumstance. Just have to be mindful that I don't end up drilling for so long that the limit of floating objects is reached and I end up wasting my efforts. <sighs> right, finally, now that it's midday when I was supposed to get going at daybreak, I have got everything ready to go that I should need in order to get a base established fairly quickly at the new site. So yeah, I've got power power cells for a battery, I've got a whole bunch of interior plate, all of the computers I'm hopefully going to need. And I don't think I've got anything else in here. Yes, I do. I've got my nickel and my silicon, which I should bring with me as well. Stored power 682 kilowatts, stored power 282. So that's, that's not too bad. They're both more than they were when I set off on my exploratory mining trip. So, I think it is time for us to detach. Oh, no. Splitsy, why? Why do you keep thinking of things like this? No, I'm not gonna do it. I was just very tempted to add a battery, a small grid battery to one of these rotors so that it could get charged while it just, this thing all sits here doing nothing. But no, I will not. I'm not waiting that much longer. We need to get moving. Detach head. Now, let's increase the strength of all of our wheels. Slowly. 
12 should be right. Handbrake off, rear wheels on. Let's see if we can get out of here. Head off to our new home. Or as it's currently written on my... <gasps> almost did a really dumb thing then. Almost drove off the edge of this little platform. As I was saying. Or as it's written on the GPS. New home? Let's get there. Onto the smooth snow. You can do it. I know you can. I got in there. You can get out. There we are. I think we might need slightly stronger suspensions. It's the survivor pod wheels, let's bring it up to 14. Maybe 16. Yeah, it's pretty heavy at the back there. Front ones still seem okay. Oh, this feels so good. Should have enough to get a proper start on a proper base. Because this temporary base thing, it was kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. I was getting a bit frustrated by the fact that I couldn't really do stuff the way that I wanted to. Oh, we just make it over that ridge. Because there wasn't much point placing anything down because I knew I was going to move and with the expense of everything and with destruction of everything if I move, it just was bad. I'm going to be so happy to finally place down a proper home block that will at least last until the drones come find me. Oh, does not like even a slight slope. <laughs> I don't have much power and I am pretty heavy. I'm almost 40,000 kilograms and considering we're at 1.9 G's, that's a lot of work for the wheels to do. Come on, you can do it, little wheels. You're going to do it. Grip and send me forward. I think I've got a little bit more power I can apply to them. Uh, I set my friction fairly high though, so there's not much room to move there to get myself up this slope a bit better. I just lose. What took damage? Battery looks okay. Battery looks okay. I think I already had that damaged. O2H2 gen's okay. Oh. Dang world seam. Coming out of nowhere. Rude. Oh, that was bad. And here we are. We have arrived at the site. Oh, well, hello, nearby unknown signal. Wonder if I should go over to that. No, I need to build a base. No being capac here. Ah, yes, right. This is where we're going to start. Let's see if I can get a little bit of. I don't think this amount of elevation is going to make much of a difference, but I would normally kind of fly above and see what things are going to look like. But I suppose standing on top is going to have to do. I think what I'd really like to do is at some point build some sort of arboretum using a couple of these trees and have it semi-internal so that I've got something nice and natural around the area, around the base. So perhaps what I should begin with is the garage. And that means we're going to need to get a few of those. Stitch those out. Grab a new oxygen bottle. And for our garage, if we're going to stick with the reddish colors, because I can always repaint it later. Yeah, I will stick with the reddish colors for now. Get down low enough that we're not too far above the top point because I'd like not to be too elevated to begin with. It's still relatively flat down that way and I want to be able to drive easily into and out of the garage. Maybe if I start down here. Oh, so much pre-planning that I cannot get my head around right now. Actually, no, let's not do the garage first. Let's do a production facility first. So the production facility needs to be Large grid, O2 tank, vent, pressurizable, 
with room for a large refinery and proper assembler and a couple of basic refineries so that I can continue to process stone. That means we'll start with a bit of a... Let's start it off to the side here somewhere. Because I kind of like that spot to be my living quarters. We'll start with a production facility over here. And hopefully this will work out in the end. Because the production facility can also, on its roof, have some wind turbines so that we get a little bit of power production to begin with. So if I just lay out enough that we've got space for at least one refinery and its upgrade modules, which is a two by three bottom, kind of like that, and then room to walk around the outside of it. Then we'll want to have a gap between it and whatever's next to it, just so that I can detach stuff and move it later if I need to. Do I want to plan for a second refinery or is that... That's too ambitious. I can always get an extra refinery later. So we have the refinery placed there and its upgrade modules behind. Then we'll have the conveyor tube coming out where that block just placed. And on it, we can attach a pair of basic refineries. Then leave another pair next, right next to each other. No. Refinery, gap, refinery. Then we can have another bit of piping going from there across to where our assembler will sit. And this space does look like it's going to get pretty big, but I th think laying it out this way is ultimately going to be necessary. So our basic refinery, we have one there. And then we'll have our assembler. Let's just pop a couple more on the blocks down so I can walk around. And then assembler on here. Though the assembler should really be elevated up one more block. That's what I'll do. And now place down like that. And then I'll put my assembler up here. And then I'll just work out the piping around it. And the tanks for the oxygen and that sort of stuff as we go along. So assembler. That's not how you spell assembler. Assembler. And I want to have a cargo access port there. So assembler. Okay, everything is in the assembler. Then we build the refinery and then I need to work out how I'm going to get my power up. And as soon as I got some power up on this thing, we can start getting some defenses. Need to make sure I don't put the unnecessary plate in stuff because I really want to save what I've got. Like I did! No! Oh, Splitzy, why? Why did you do that? I placed down too many blocks and I now have... I'm 21 steel plates short. Ah, that's so bad. And I bet, yep, I didn't need to put the 20 in there. I would have been one steel plate short, which really would not be that much of a big deal. Arr. Energy low. Uh, mum, 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 mum. If I reverse this onto the steel plates I've already got, I may be able to lift it up high enough to place a block to lock that landing gear. I should only need to get one wheel up on it. The other option, I guess, would be to just reverse over it. But I don't think I've got enough of a spread with those wheels. Let's check out if I can place down an interior block there. Oh, oh. Yes! Lock it in. Now, that means I can undo you. Detach head. My little miner is free! Right, where is the nearest easy rock bit? Yeah, it's probably in the direction I'm heading. Ooh. Because I've got so far to travel each time I want to get any rock, if I until at least until I've built the base and I know where I could establish a mine without ruining any design ideas I've got. I may want to build a little cargo trailer for this thing. So I'll back half, like the survival kit ended up being, but a bit more cargo specific. 
It's lucky drills can take this sort of punishment. There are many blocks that can't. Oh, there we go. Now we got the drill up. Oh, back to the survival kit. How much I did not want to do this. <laughs> Didn't really have a choice. I mean, I could drive back all the way to the other base, then mine a bit, then come back here with the resources in the miner, so come back here with refined stuff. But I don't really have much cargo space in this for refined stuff because I wouldn't be able to fill the drill. Aha! There we go. We have the two pieces that are needed for more advanced construction. Now we just need power to them. So what I'm thinking is, I know where my wall is going to be. I should be able to build some stairs. Ooh, if it goes all the way up at the outs- upper? Up at the outside? No, if it goes all the way up the outside of the building. I just had the half stairs against it. Might look kind of cool. So if I have, like, mounted that way. And we just start from the bottom and I work my way up. I'll probably need a lot more steel plate to pull that off, though. Maybe I will go with the proper wide stairs, actually. It's the full width stairs. Although they're bit broader than what I want until I have a means to attach the half ones. This plus one of these. Uh oh. Ooh. Really need to remember to add that mod that uh, I was sent that gives me an earlier warning. I kind of forgot when I started recording today and once I've got the time-lapse cameras set up it's just a bit too late to rush in and do any more. Okay, so what I should be able to do with these stairs is place one down like that. Then the corner light behind it. And another one on top of the corner light. Like so. And we'll be able to get up to the height we need. With hopefully minimal use of any steel plate. Assuming I can keep placing the lights down. The point when I can't reach to place the lights down is going to be the fiddly bit. Uh oh. Okay, uh, so there's my first red signal. I have reached the PCU limit where stuff can spawn. Not the PCU limit, the threat score level where bad things can happen. I hope, and looking at the path that that's taken, I'm pretty confident that won't get in the range where it will attack me. So yeah, uh, that's a worry. That's one construction component, that's not too expensive. Because then I can place this one, I can then place the light. Yeah, this is actually not a bad uh, way to go about placing these things down. Place the light on the... <gasps> <laughs> okay, not going to try that again. I need to go one further so that I can build the roof block on top of the refinery so that I can keep everything airtight. Got our light. Get our last stair. I put that there. Should be able to put one next to it and then put a catwalk. Yeah, and then catwalk I can I should be able to place down. Uh yeah, I'll put a graded catwalk there, then put my corner there. Huzzah! It works. It looks ridiculous right now, but as soon as I get this all this up and running. The first thing I will be doing is making all of this not floating in the air. Because I was really hoping not to take too much advantage of infinite tensile strength. But for now, I think it's necessary. So my plan before the sun fire fully goes down and we lose all light is to get a little bit of power on this base, this new base. And with the bit of power on this base, I should be able to at least use the basic refinery to get extra resources to pump through the assembler and then gradually build this production facility to the scale that I wanted and have all of the different connections and things set up as intended. Now, I do want to build that up another block, but do I want to use a light armor block? Do I want to do something with a little more style? I think I want a little more style. So wheel one by one. So what I'm trying to work out now is how I'm going to get the turbine on top of this wheel. 
I used a wheel because I like the look of the turbines on top of wheels, and I like trying to do that decorative stuff. But the trouble I've got is by placing that right on the very corner of this build, I have made it impossible for me to get up there and place the turbine. I've also made it very difficult to do anything with ladders so that I can make it look like I could reach it. So I think what I'm going to have to do is stand on top of this railing, jump and place the turbine when it's in the right spot, like that. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Let's get rid of that out of my list. Let's build this turbine. Huzzah! Now, how much power is that generating? I really hope that's 108. If it's less, that's gonna suck. 101. Yeah, that's okay. I'll live with that. So the idea I've got with the wind turbines is every major building on the base is going to have turbines on top and that'll give me some nice baseline power generation and then the solar panel tower it's going to do the rest. So it'll be the peak power and it'll be the thing that actually works to recharge stuff as well. Well I feel like I've achieved something today. I've achieved a bizarre beginning of a base but I've got some plans about how we can make all, all of this work properly. I'm happy that I'm using stairs instead of ramps here because this, even in its unwelded state, looks like it's usable, which makes me happy. And we're in our new home. A new home without, let me get up there. Our new home with our amazing, glorious view. So next time I'm gonna work on improving this building and Hopefully getting out there and collecting a whole lot more materials with the miner. Maybe I'll even go and find one of those iron rocks that I identified so that I can collect a bigger chunk of iron in one go. So there's all that and plenty more to come and I will see you then.